promise you this will be the shortest graduation announcement commencement you've heard. I promise you, okay? But now it's my turn. I've, I've kind of stayed in the, in the background, but just for a minute or two, just not just for y'all, but for everybody, I promise you. Uh, Ephesians 1, verses 15 through 23. Uh, please hear these words. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which has, he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for all who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him head, the head over all things, even the church which is this, his body, the fullness of him, who fills all in all. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. It was not always rosy for Theodore Seuss Geisel. There were situations in his life that did not, all, did not always spell relief. He had what I call some hang-ups and bang-ups. I read the book this week, y'all. Then I searched out Theodore, Ted, Ted Theodore Geisel, Dr. Seuss. When he was 10 years old, he was to be awarded as a Boy Scout for selling so many war bonds by President Teddy Roosevelt. There were 10 of them. And when Theodore was time to come to get his award, the medal was gone. There was no more medals. There were just nine medals. And Ted's scoutmaster whisked him off the stage because he didn't receive a medal. Call. And President Roosevelt said, what's this boy doing here? Well, it made a great impact on Dr. Seuss. He despised to be in front of people after that. While he went to school at Dartmouth, one night he and some buddies were out partying, going around, and he, they found him with a <laughs> container of bootleg liquor, you know, carrying it around. And so that didn't go over well. Uh, they kicked him off of the school's uh, magazine, humor magazine. So it didn't happen good. His first wife committed suicide because of an illness and also because that, you know, maybe he was doing some things on the side he shouldn't have been doing, like talking in, with other women and things like that and wound up marrying one of them. So, you know, those things just kind of happen. Life is like that. It's not always a bed of roses. There will be, and has already come, times of rejection in your life. Let me tell you about one of mine. When I was going through ordination process, we were required to write answers to questions that are in the discipline. And to make a long story short, that, that those answers added up to about 50 pages of material. Wow. Had to be turned in by December 31. And we would go before an extensive board, a board of like 15 people, and we'd get around a circle. And they'd all be there, and I'd be sitting right in the middle. You think, you're thinking about this? You got it going? And they'd be drilling me on my answers. I left that interview. I thought things had gone well. Hey, I'm pretty good. That afternoon, guess what? I got a call from one of those board members, and they said, I'm sorry, you didn't make it this year. Your worship service was too chaotic. They said, your video had too many kids in it. I'm like, boy, I wish I had that problem now. What a rejection. What a hang up. What a bang up. And that's the way things are in life. It just happens. I remember 
my college graduation, the baccalaureate service. I remember the baccalaureate services at Methodist. I remember them at Duke Divinity School, and I just couldn't wait. You know, to tell you the truth, and I know you may be thinking this, and it's going to happen in a minute. I couldn't wait for the speaker to hush. So, that was the, for me, that was the best part about it. I don't want it to be the best part for you, okay? I want to talk to you for just a minute about someone you have that sticks closer than a sister or a brother. There will be those times when you will, like Dr. Seuss wrote about, have hang-ups and bang-ups. Listen, we all have them. They come. They hit us. And we have to bounce back from those situations. But I have a friend. You got a friend in this Jesus that loves you and loves me. You see his eyes? They're looking up and watching over you day by day. You got a friend. Now that doesn't mean he's going to watch you and think and say, oh, I'm just going to rave and ramp about everything you do, because you will make mistakes, okay? We all make mistakes, but you got a friend that's looking over you and saying, with love and compassion, I'm going to take care of you, I'm going to be with you, I'm going to continue to anoint you, regardless if you go to work, if you go to school, wherever God might lead you, you got, you got a friend. Jesus, listen, y'all, and I'm done. Jesus wants to make something beautiful out of your life. He wants to make something beautiful out of your life. If you forget everything that's ever been taught, know that you have this guiding presence, presence keeping an eye on you day by day. We love you. We love you. We care about you. We pray for you. Like Paul said in, in Ephesians, I pray for you. I pray that God puts his power upon you. Remember, those last three verses in that text, I'm, I'm done. Those last three verses in that text says that Jesus is the head of all things, even the church. So anybody that's got a you know, problem with that, it's not me. It's in the text. We'll fight with you through those hang-ups and bang-ups, okay? Because you've got a friend in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. God of grace and glory, now be with us as we come and celebrate the sacrament. This is the graduates' first communion, maybe, <coughs> as graduates. Bless them, Lord. Help them to understand that uh, there'll be times when the road might be rocky, but you will see them through. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen.